Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Borcom, in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives after they put on important news. And usually it's called Beyond the Press Release, but today it's Beyond the Press Releases, because since the last time we had on Mike Farber, Mike Farber, Director of Life Sciences, Dennis Hancock, President CEO of Mountain Valley MD, uh, they put out a number of big press releases. For those who are new to the story, MBMD, uh, the CSE, MBMDF for our friends in the U.S., uh, we know that this is a very, the great thing about cutting edge companies like Mountain Valley is that they are breaking into new uncharted territory, doing unbelievable things. So that's the great part because opening up markets that were never available before. But the, but the other side of that coin is that it's difficult to sometimes understand uh, what these companies do when they're breaking into, into new territory. So what you need to know about MVMD is that they take existing vaccines and drugs and deliver them better, both into the body and by transportation to the world, they do it way better. Uh, so here to talk about the company and what's been happening is both Mike and Dennis. Guys, welcome to the show. Thanks, George. Thanks, George. Great to see you. So guys, lots happened since last time we spoke. Before we get into the specifics of each one of these powerful initiatives, right, global changing initiatives, Dennis, how's the company, how, what's, what's the nature, the status of the company since the last time we spoke about five weeks ago? Yeah, that's so much has happened. Uh, we tell people uh, like MDM, MVM, MDMV, sorry, uh, moves faster. And man, uh, we've been proving that people are generally blown away when they see the progress we've made since we spoke last, um, you know, starting with today's release, we're going to talk a little bit about how we're moving down a 505 B2 pathway with the FDA in a, in a solid pursuit in an accelerated fashion and human applications. Uh, we've started a BSL uh, level four clearance trial, uh, bringing our best technology in the world to prove its effectiveness in COVID-19 viral clearance, including the South African variant, which we added to that. Uh, really, really exciting stuff there. And then we've uh, finished the formulation work to start our dose sparing adjuvant work at Tulane next week, and that's all been finalized and uh, ready to roll. And uh, we've added some incredible uh, progress on our husbandry animal category in the pursuit of animal health, bringing on a new advisor inside the company. And, uh, you know, lots of really, really uh, strong momentum. Uh, we could probably talk for several hours, but we'll do our best today to give you the tips of the ways. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll get through. Safe to assume, safe to say, Dennis, that the, the company is in the strongest position it's ever been in. Yeah, it's it's amazing because we have our really solid lines on the commercialization and revenue forecast, and uh, it's really been able to help us accelerate, you know, the confidence we have in these negotiations and the certain things that we're building out. And so, yeah, I've never been more excited and, and proud of the work we're doing. All right, let's dive into it. Um, first press release, Mountain Valley MD proceeding with FD, FDA, you know, 505 pathway application for novel uh, Evectosol. So, lot to lot in that headline to absorb. You know how we like to do this. Before we do the FDA deeper dive part, what is, just give everyone at home just a brief reminder, especially for new people. What is Evectosol? Uh, what problem is it solving? How big is this market? Yeah. So I'll start with that, and then Mike's a, a great candidate to walk us through the technicalities of the 505 B2 pathway. But Ivectosol is our trademarked version for our solubilized work with ivermectin. And essentially, we've taken a wonder drug that's been, you know, there's a mountain of evidence now on its effectiveness against COVID-19. It's a uh, blockbuster drug well known for uh, husbandry animal and companion animal uh, parasitic clearance. And uh, we've basically taken that through a solubilization technique and made what I would say one of the, the best drugs in the world even better. And our, our PK data shows a, uh, a rapid improvement in PK of almost every metric you could imagine, but how fast the drug is into the body, um, the least variability in the fastest time, and getting to the point where we're demonstrating the ability to use one fifth or one eighth of the drug across various applications. Uh, so take us through uh, this process. Why, usually people say FDA, but you, you specifically uh, uh, mentioned, mentioned the 505 B2 FDA pathway. Okay. What is it about that that makes this easier, Mike? Because 
a lot of us are used to hearing FDA, five year, hundreds of millions of dollars. That's not the case. Exactly. Talk well, to us about that here. For a new drug. What's nice is the 505B2 pathway was established specifically to address drugs that have been in the market, have proven safety and efficacy. But when you come along with a better <clears> formulation, when you come along with a different dosage format that you can apply to the FDA and you can use what are called uh, all of the data that was originally submitted on that API, on that drug, all of the safety data, all of the usage data, all of the pharmacokinetics. And all you have to do with the FDA is basically bridge that data to the data of how you're now dosing in the novel form. And let me be specific, the fastest pathway is an application for the drug in the same way that it was now approved by the FDA. We are not seeking new applications for the drug. We are asking the FDA to consider Evectasol as a wafer sublingual dosed in humans for the exact same uh, type of uh, application such as parasites, ecto and endoparasites that are currently approved by the FDA in humans. This is the fastest pathway. We are not asking the FDA to consider other applications of the drug because that would slow down the application. So what we've done is we selected a partner, Camargo, who has extensive experience in this type of pathway and are dedicated to bringing enhanced formulations of proven drugs to patients to enhance basically the health and welfare of American citizens. So we selected Camargo because of their experience and again, of their focus on trying to bring better formulations to the market to help patients. To, so to use been, a layman's terms, you're just, you're taking a, you're making a better mousetrap at the end of the day, right? Exactly. And all we have to do is prove yeah. to the FDA that this mousetrap bridges the gap between what we're saying mm -hmm. and what, let's say, Merck said about stromectol. So what we're doing is we're, we have to provide a modicum of information, let's say a small PK trial to bridge the gap between what was established and what we're proving. So this is a very fast pathway, 12 months, 15 months. This is the type of time frame where if the FDA agrees with everything we're putting forward, we can be in the market 12 to 15 months from today with an approved drug as a new- how, And how big is that market, guys? So, so people market really get an understanding of how big this is. Globally, if you look at all of the potential applications to malaria, to dengue, to treating parasites in Africa and uh, South America, in India, is probably in excess of a billion dollars. And it has a tremendous application for things that it's not currently approved for, but is being used off label right now anyway in many parts of the world. So having an FDA approval will allow us to now with our global partners, start pushing this acceptance of this form into the rest of the world. I, if I could build on that, George, I think it's- sure, of course. Well, what's interesting when you, even for Mike to try to put a dollar value, I think it's important to punctuate, you know, you can look at an existing marketplace when you don't have something with the precision, even a variability. Um, and so, you know, the number, you know, I would think is, even greater than that when you start to say what's the existing market versus what's possible and when you start to understand right, a stable right. ivermectin um it's not impossible to you know just look at we're 30 trillion dollars in economic cost on covid alone so the answer to that question if we um, in our viral clearance trial prove that this is the number one you know proxy in the world to, as a therapeutic for COVID-19 and all future pandemics in that category of viral outbreak, it's tens of tens of billions of dollars. Um, when you look at the, the more narrow lane of, you know, where is it used today without the inspiration of a drug that can be, you know, the CMAX is faster, the variability even on oral to oral goes from 40% to 5% using one fifth of the drug, you know, less drug in the body has always been our goal. Drug, drugs are, you know, meaningful and purposeful, but we don't, we don't, everyone doesn't realize that they overdose today, even It's like insurance. You want to have yeah. it. You don't want to be overinsured at the end of the day. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I think it's a great question. It's a spectrum of answer because of, as we open up new markets, uh, frankly, it's, it's unlimited. And then even the husbandry animal overlay, which is a build, 
you know, there's there's a, a brand, we'll talk about this. I don't want to steer your yeah, 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 exactly. But, you know, the husband your animal thing, you know, we we can look at just poultry, cattle, and swine as a $70 billion, uh, $70 billion injection market, which if you started to overlay and you know, how many dollars per injection, how many pennies per injection, that's another massive revenue opportunity. You really, would, would, would it be accurate to use this uh, example? You really don't know the size of the market when you have a bad product. So uh, first mm. time we ever had internet connections dial up, uh, <laughs> you know, there was a market but it, was a, it, was, it wasn't a great product. Well, I shouldn't say bad product for what's existing in the marketplace today. Uh, it, it wasn't a great product, but once we got to high speed and all those things, the market just expanded because way more people want to use it. So that's essentially where you guys are, are when you talk about size of the market, Dennis, now it's almost unknown right now how big it could be. Yeah, yeah. If you start to say, is this sitting in everyone's cupboard at home like a vitamin C tablet as a part of a first aid kit, for a bio defense, right. so it's a um, much different answer than, you know, than the simpler, you know, view of the current drug. Before we move on to the husbandry animal trials, I want to talk just a little bit more about Camargo Pharma. Uh, having them assisting here uh, is, I think, is big third-party validation, and I want you to explain why, but they're, they're just not going to take on George Com Pharma, uh, George Com MD, because I think I have something. I'm presuming that they don't like to waste their time uh, when they're consulting and assisting. So can you guys give us an indication of just how big and how important, Camar how successful Camargo Pharma is and who they work with? If you look, Camargo has made probably 11 or 1200 presentations to the FDA, has gotten 200 uh, drugs approved through the 505 B2 pathway. Super experienced. They're not gonna take on somebody. We've had preliminary discussions with them. We've sure. shown them basically what we're doing, how we're formulating, what the approach will be. I've dealt with them before. If they don't feel that the 505B2 pathway is appropriate, they're going to tell you it's not appropriate and they're not going to counsel you to start doing it. They don't want to take on clients and basically waste their time and waste our time. So having the validation that they believe in, in discussions, they've said this, they firmly believe that the 505B2 pathway is the pathway that we will achieve for approval of a Evectosol. So I believe that there is firmly committed and is firmly believing in what we can achieve with the, the FDA as we are. So yeah, it's tremendous validation of what we're doing. A quote you guys have in the press release is a perfect segue into the animal trial. And you guys say, the human approval pathway timed with our aggressive pursuit of husbandry applications is core to making our Vectorsol uh, products the number one commercial form of ivermectin in the world. I mean, that's a pretty, that's a pretty big statement, Dennis. So let's talk now about the next headline: Mountain Valley MD commencing husbandry animal trials appoints seasoned doctor of veterinary medicine to advise uh, to uh, to advisory board. Before we get into that detail, new people. What is husbandry animal trials? What, husbandry, kind of that term probably throws people off. So maybe just shed a little light on that and then we'll go into specifics. Yeah, yeah, it's great. The So husbandry animals are essentially, you know, game, livestock, the farming animals, if you will. And we'll often refer to companion animals, which would be the pets, you know, human pets like dogs and uh, right. cats and such. So in, in fact, it'll apply to to the companion animal market as well. So the husbandry trial that we're commencing is um, starting in swine. Um, to, there's, there's two lanes there that I think are worth just sort of clarifying. Today, um, there's already an injectable form of ivermectin used in large animals. Um, it's a thick gauge needle. Um, the animals, often swine or cattle, have to be restrained. Um, it's a very painful, it's a thick gauge needle. I liken it to people imagine a, a straw going, you know, it's a it's very painful. They don't use it in horses as an example because of the, the damage to the coat. Wow. Um, so just give, you know, gives people a sense. And today, a subcutaneous injection, that effect in our own PK data, we've, you know, that takes about 36 hours for onset for the CMAX. So our injectable form 
is a 15 minute onset, 0% variability. It can change dramatically in how you approach that entire category. And what's really exciting when you understand Ivectasol now, the solubilization of that uh, drug Ivermectin down to a format that's the viscosity of water, now you can go with ultra thin gauge needles or what more exciting in the trials we're doing, go to complete needleless applications. So there's the- How would it be needleless, Dennis? Just explain how that can be needleless. So there's there's injectors on the marketplace and we're working with a couple leading partners in this space that it, it essentially uses air to open up a hair follicle. So you think of the size versus especially with you imagine a straw and in the extreme subcutaneous example, and that injects in a needle-free way, you know, the ivectasol into the, um, in this case, uh, swine and poultry. And where that gets really powerful is today there's not an injectable form for poultry. So poultry alone is a, you know, 60 to 70 billion injection marketplace just in, in that oh, category wow. today, where we, that's why we get really excited about the commercialized opportunity for this product. And uh, we're not sitting around hypothesizing, we're moving fast into the trials and formats, looking at the best applicators, looking at uh, the clearance data that would be you know, driving a whole category advancement. Do you guys ever speak, oh, go ahead, Mike, looks like you wanna add something there. You say that we have global partners that we're working with that are already interested in the husbandry space. And so we're not just working in North America with Dr. Rondo, but we're using the information and Dr. Rondo's expertise to mm-hmm. basically design trials that will be held in other locations that will drive acceptance of the husbandry Ivectasol 1% solution at a much faster rate that can even be done in North America. So we're looking abroad to uh, areas of the world where this is uh, very necessary, where they have large uh, poultry, large swine uh, or cattle population. And we're dealing with the, the global partners that can advance this at a very rapid rate. So it's not just uh, a small scale trial. We're working with partners that have the, the right mindset and the right connections to get these approvals done very quickly so that we can advance this into the market and make this a commercial reality much sooner than later. Mike, I started smiling and laughing there when you gave your answer because right, right, I was about to ask you a question when I let you in there because you had something that that was exactly what I was going to ask you. I was presuming that you guys aren't going through all this without knowing what market acceptance might look like if anybody in the industry even wants this. Uh, so I was going to ask who have you guys spoken to, what kind of feedback are you getting? But Mike, it sounds like you guys have already talked to significant partners who are, would it be fair to say, excited about the possibility uh, of these husbandry trials and dentists of this new product? And if everything goes well, you know, we'll go commercialize along with you? Yeah, absolutely. There's, uh, if you can imagine, even the markets we started describing in poultry that aren't even available today, there's a very significant uh, commercialization uh, opportunity. And even candidly, in some third world countries, the livelihood and the ability just to save, you know, their their dying animals and from parasites and attacks and all of that. It's a pretty broad uh, opportunity that we're excited about. And I'm going to quote you from the press release. With our solubilized Evectasol 1% solution, we will be able to pursue new injectable markets for ivermectin, such as game and poultry that don't exist today, opening up tens of billions of animal applications globally per year. I mean, that's not the first time you guys said billions and <laughs> tens of billions. Yeah. Hey, if everything went well and you were able to get, I don't know, five, 10% of the market, I'm not saying you can't get a hundred because, but even if you got uh, you know, decent penetration, this is a, ma- this, this, this part alone is massive for Mountain Valley MD. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, all right, so we'll leave it at that because what I love to do is back in the napkin math, but let's not fall to that temptation, but it's, it's a big number. We'll let people at home do that. Yeah. Um, you mentioned this in your, uh, in your intro also, Dennis. Please elaborate on the South African variant uh, on your COVID-19 clearance trials uh, that at events. How does that impact anything or how does that make you guys even stronger? 
Yeah, so we had already scheduled the BSL-4, and for those that don't understand the significance of that type of, of lab trial, you know, it's, um, I joke about every zombie apocalypse movie you've ever seen, they start in some outbreak in these types of facilities. Um, so very difficult, there's less than 30 of these facilities in the world that even do this work. Um, and so we are already going down, you know, the scheduling, uh, of course, to show the effectiveness of Ivectasol in clearing COVID-19. Um, and that'll inform dosage um, direction in human and other applications. So very sophisticated trial. And um, we were early on, if those have been following the South African uh, variant, it's, a, it's moving at a much faster pace, um, although not uh, more deadly, um, much more contagious, which in, in turn, even at the low death rates, continues to contribute more death. So we were quite excited to take that and put it into the trial format. And um, that is already underway now as well, testing that variant. Um, and it'll have very significant implications to be able to show, um, you know, especially as vaccines today, as they're getting distributed, we've already seen that variant um, sort of beat the defense system, if you will, of the current vaccines and, and really less effective. So as a therapeutic, this will be critical to help with the next waves, future waves, and again, in future pandemics. And just to clarify for everyone at home uh, who might think you're creating a new vaccine, what is the trial for? What are you guys looking to achieve in the trial? Yeah. So what good. we're looking in the trial is to prove that one, Evectasol is effective in quickly clearing COVID-19 from an infected animal, in this case, a transgenic animal. And what we're then gonna do is test the optimal formulation against clearing uh, a South African variant, which is shown to be uh, something that is not as effectively treated with the current uh, series, the first generation of vaccines that's on the market. Some vaccines currently out have shown only a 10% efficacy against the South African variant. So what, we're th what we think is that these variations of coronavirus will continue to evolve. You'll get more and more mutations. As you get more mutations, you might have other variants that are even better at evading the current first generation of vaccines. And they're even predicting now that we're gonna see second, even third, maybe even fourth generations of vaccines coming every season with a new wave of coronavirus infection. So what we're trying to prove is that the <clears throat> mechanism of viral clearance using Ivectasol is unlike that of a vaccine. It's a basic mechanism that stops viral replication in the cell rather than producing an antibody which binds to a specific confirmation of a molecule within the uh, virus itself. So it's a very different approach the approach of, of using Ivectasol is a little more basic. It's not tuned to each variant. It's tuned to a very basic mechanism of viral replication. How does the, uh, what's the timing for the, for the BSL-4 uh, clearance trials, guys? We've already started, we're, uh, we're starting this week. So we should have readouts within approximately two months. If everything goes well, when, when can you go to market with that? Again, this is a question of first, having the approval of the wafer. So the 5052B would basically fast track the wafer approval. As that goes along, then proving that it has applications to COVID would allow it to then be used or to be applied for, for COVID-19 through an application of off-label. So what we're doing is a first 5052B, which allows very fast track for a label application, which is conforming to what's already been approved for ivermectin. And then to allow it to be treated off-label once the INH and the FDA approves ivermectin for treatment for COVID. I think I could build on that, George. And, you know, we're working very, well, surprise no one to know how fast we are looking at this. So we're already um, moving in a direction with the assumption of the progress we're going to make with that trial um, to accelerate our, our timing. And we're fully moving along in very advanced discussions um, both from production and from application in some of the targeted countries. Um, most people expect us just to, they keep thinking Canada and the USA. Um, that's not where we're starting. You know, we're starting in 
countries that are the most disadvantaged and your viewers will stay tuned on you know some very exciting progress that we're working hard towards and uh, you know building on what where Mike's intimating um, we're pretty excited about the doors that are opening right now to solve frankly a global need but we'll start in the most disadvantaged areas um, and that seems to be a bit of an underlying theme in all of these different issues we've discussed you're not just playing in your backyard it seems like you've got international attention potential partnerships uh, all those kind of things right so Mountain Valley MD is fair to say in the in your industry very well known uh, four corners of the planet yeah, it's true, because even, uh, you know, we've talked a bit on with you last time about our cold chain work. Again, there's some some immediate benefits here, but we're spoiled in North America with electricity infrastructure and air conditioned cars and environments. Um, again, all our all the problems we're solving start at the most disadvantaged people on Earth in those countries that don't have the infrastructure electricity wise. They don't have the sophistication or budgets candidly. Uh, for vaccines and distribution. Exactly. So people, um, you know, the partners we align with uh, candidly always have a very common denominator in the sense of making right. a difference, pursuing uh, husbandry and animal health. Even husbandry applications is, a, is the key to creating an entire livelihood, you know, so there's less death and more focus on, you know, the GDP of the most disadvantaged nations. And so partners that we attract and and the, the way we describe our brand, it's a very authentic, let's do better, um, let's make a difference. And I would assume they're much more highly motivated, less, uh, less corporatocracy to get through and all of that stuff. If it works, you can save lives. You can directly or you can save lives through making our livestock better, healthier, and more people eating at the end of the day. Yeah, bingo. And it's not a litigious environment. You know, there's a, it's a completely different, you know, objective in marketplace. Uh, we said that last time, nothing better if you're an MVMD shareholder than to make a great profit and knowing literally that you're helping support saving. If you extrapolate down the road a year, five years, 10, 20, millions of people, yep. right? Millions of people. It's fantastic. On that note, last but not least, uh, because it was a subject of, uh, it was a great subject in our, in our last interview your initiative to eradicate the world of polio, uh, which I think, I mean, you guys got a lot of priorities, but it seems like that may be the number one priority. Uh, Mike, if you don't mind, because there are new people watching, maybe give us a one minute overview what you're doing there, first of all, and then let's go into your, your announcement where you're commencing trials the week of March 8th, just next Monday. Yeah, so we'll be starting uh, a very definitive trial at Tulane University to both analyze the effect of our dose sparing adjuvant with polio, which will then segue into work that we're doing in terms of cold chain. So these two will intersect at one point going forward. So the ability to save, to use a much lower dose is really the key in terms of, of fitting in the idea of polio eradication, polio, IPV is quite expensive. And the use of our, of our adjuvant is not only designed to reduce dosage, but we're also exploring its ability to invoke what's called mucosal immunity. So that would allow the IPV to produce a type of immunity that currently isn't available through injectable IPV. And what that would do is basically produce a type of immunity that would clear polio from the gut. Currently, if you're, I'll give you an example, let's say 95% of people in Israel are injected by IPV. But if you look in the sewer system, you still have live polio because polio can exist in the gut, in the gastrointestinal tract of people, be flushed into the, gas, the, into the sewage system and still be alive to infect other people. The only way to eradicate polio is to be able to induce mucosal immunity in the people that you are vaccinating and therefore eradicate polio where it exists in humans in, in the gastrointestinal tract. So this is the prime objective really of what we're trying to achieve in our work with Tulane over the next few weeks. And the trial's commencing March 8th. And I was about to ask you, so I guess you can answer there, how long do you expect the trials to last? We say a few weeks, three, four weeks, eight, a couple of months. 
I think, well, I can let Dennis answer this, but we, normally these trials take a few weeks and then the readouts, the, the analysis, the ELISA tests that are done afterwards in, in the mice and everything that will validate exactly the statistical uh, performance of what we've achieved. It'll probably take about 60 days, something around there to really yeah. get the final readouts. Yeah. If, if, if all goes well, Dennis, what's the market? So we know, we know that the, the, the biggest priority is just helping eradicate this. But as shareholders watching as well, if all goes well, when could you go to market if everything went well realistically and how big of a market is this for you? Well, yeah, I can extrapolate that question uh, as we end here. The, the dose sparing work, um, although applied right now specifically to eradicate polio, that vaccine work, you know, we're, we're forecasting, you know, up to 1 20th of a dose for the same effect. And it links directly with our cold chain application work where we would, you know, lay that into a vial, ship it outside of cold chain, hydrate it locally in market and administer with, you know, the same precision that's done today with a fraction of the cost structure. So how we monetize that is interesting, how each partner that chooses the molecule and the pathway for their vaccine, it has massive implications on production, cold chain, you know, which we've talked previously is a, a $50 billion annual problem. Um, so the market, again, I, I don't want to just keep saying tens of billions, but it has that type of application as well. Um, let's end it off with this. First of all, congratulations, because it seems like yeah, yeah. you're really hitting on all cylinders. Um, conclude, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you a question, but leading into a conclusion for you guys last word. It seems like all the initiatives so far are going as planned. I, I, know, I know things will perfectly, but it seems like whatever hurdles you guys might internally have on initiative A or initiative B, you're overcoming because the big picture is they're all moving forward um, and, they're, and they're all moving forward uh, pretty well. Is that safe to say, guys, that you guys are on track and maybe even ahead of pace with, with everything? Yeah, I, w without a doubt, I think people are surprised when they keep seeing the cadence of even the news we share. And of course, we share material news but you've only seen half of the stuff we're working on is what I would say. <laughs> Mike, any last words from you uh, on, on your, you know, you're the life sciences guy there on your level of satisfaction with how things are going and, and how you guys might be able to impact the world. I think honestly, in the last month, especially with the type of partnerships with Camargo, Dr. Rondo and other global partners, I think we're starting to realize that we can bring basically these, uh, inventions to market very quickly. I also think that it will open the, the gateway for us to do other things that we've intimated, things that we're looking at as we complete these, the first stage of these, we're now looking to insulin, we're looking to uh, GLP-1 agonists in sublingual application, we're looking to selamectin possibly uh, to be able to dose that under our, uh, you know, solubility, the uh, uh, our solubility patents to use celemectin to apply to tuberculosis, for example. So I think as we go through these first stages, we now are looking to the, the next stage of development, which will open Already, the wow. to just really uh, pretty amazing. And I look forward to really the work that we're going to be doing over the next six months. I think as we get together over the next six months, I think we're going to have some astounding milestones to share with you. Mm -hmm. And for some of you people, some, some investors at home would be watching or listening who I uh, wouldn't blame you if at times it gets a little overwhelming because the guys are doing an amazing job and hopefully I'm guiding them here and really getting, really discussing this in layman's terms, but there are some technical aspects. We don't expect everyone to understand them, but always remember the reason why Mountain Valley MD is able to potentially scale is that they're taking existing vaccines, existing drugs, and delivering them better, both into the body and physically transported around the world. And that leaves a, an entire global market of pharmaceuticals uh, available to, for you guys to, to make better, right? And that's, that's why sometimes when, when you say tens of billions, Dennis, I know you don't want to use it, or, and I, I'm very careful about using those terms too, but the fact of the matter is that's 
the market for so many of these things. And mm -hmm. if you guys can do it, it'll be fantastic for shareholders, but even better, it'll be fantastic for the world, guys. Continued success. Thank Amazing you. update here. Can't wait to have you back on the next one. Awesome. Thanks, George. Thanks, George. Great to see you. For everybody at home, you've been watching, or if you've listened by podcast on Spotify, Google, Apple, or your favorite podcast platform, to Mike Farber. He's Director of Life Sciences. Uh, Dennis Hancock, President CEO of Mountain Valley MD. Trades on the stock symbol MVMD. And for our friends in the U.S., MVMDF. Do your due diligence. We know some of it can be overwhelming, but guys, you're really starting to get an understanding of what the company does and the markets that are open to them, the kind of partnerships they're bringing in. Everything is adding up really, really well. Do your due diligence first start at Agoracom. Get to the Mountain Valley MD hub, take a look at the profile page. That's where we try and take all of this and put it into layman's terms. We're constantly updating this. This video will lead to even more updating of information, but that'll give you a good idea. And then from there, make your way over to the Mountain Valley MD website. That's where things are a little more technical for those of you who are able to handle that. That's where you'll really get fantastic information. And for those of you who aren't, it's still worth getting over there to some great reading, some great information. Hopefully you discovered your next great small cap company. Don't say we didn't tell you so. Have a great day. See you next time.